Hi everyone. Welcome. I am Jenna. Welcome. I'm Jenna and this is Apple Dolly. And let me know you, when you jump on. What today we're going to make is a picture of Santa Claus. Um, we're going to use a whole bunch of new techniques, old techniques, um, stuff I did 20 years ago that I thought would look nice on this. So what you need is a gift bag, and this is a large one. Um, I was looking for a religious gift bag and I couldn't find one anywhere. And you need two pieces of cardboard, um, one three inches. Hi mom, you need one three inches bigger than your gift bag and one piece that's one inch bigger than your gift bag. Uh, and you need brown paper bag. So what we're going to do is, I've already got the cardboard cut, and I've already done this technique, and I'm going to show you how to do it. You're going to open up your gift or your brown paper bag. I just picked this up at Aldi's. I got a couple of them. I opened it up, ran it underwater to dampen it, and then I rolled it into a ball and kept squeezing and kept squeezing and kept squeezing. And then this is what you get. And this is what you want. You want all these wrinkles in this bag. You want, so then you rip it up into a whole bunch of pieces. Just a whole bunch of pieces. Random, doesn't matter. That's what you want. So then, let me get this out of my way. I'm going to show you on a sample piece of cardboard what I already did to this big piece. So I laid my uh, gift bag down and I drew three, drew uh, all the way around it on the big piece of cardboard, measured out um, two inches, and then on the second piece of cardboard, I laid it out and then drew out an inch. So on the first first piece of cardboard, the biggest piece, that is our frame for our picture. So all you do is where you drew your line, you want to go over that line on the inside line uh, about an inch because you want this all covered. So I have Elmer's glue and I mix a little water to it so that it is runny. See? It's still thick, but it's runny. And I just went over my cardboard from the edge of the cardboard to the, over the uh, line that I drew. That's the same dimension of the second piece of cardboard. And just put this down take your pieces of um, torn up paper bag now if there's writing on it that goes down you don't want that showing put it down and just go over it now you are not going to get the wrinkles out we want those wrinkles to stay in and you just keep going all the way around the border and you want to overlap the edge of the cardboard just enough to wrap those edges underneath so that we cover up that edge of, the, of that cardboard. You don't want the cardboard showing because this is your frame. And you just keep going, overlapping, making sure you're covering the cardboard. We don't want the cardboard showing. Now I did this one time to a floor. See how I'm overlapping? 
it took a ton of torn up paper bags but back then you got paper bags when you went to the grocery store and when you get done this looks like leather and I did a whole entire floor in the back of my store like this it needed covering painting wasn't an option it needed covered up so I covered it with brown paper bags and it looked really nice it was a shame it was in the back room because no one really saw it so you just keep going all the way around your border overlapping your little torn pieces and overlapping your edges all the way around and that's what you get it took an hour for this uh, this much to dry so uh, we have a little guest joining us today let me wipe my hands Tony and I have been wanting to walk around the old part of Griffin that we live in and so we went up there today because it's walking distance from the house they have all kinds of little shops everywhere there are shops and we went into one and look what I got he has a drum he's big he is really big and he's heavy <laughs> I think he's handmade I'm not sure his face and his hands are like a composite material. He's missing his drumsticks, which I'm gonna make even set. But for what we paid for him, I told Tony that could be my Christmas present because I'm in love with him. So he's gonna sit here today while we do this. So, okay, we've got our whole border done all the way around. with all these little pieces of torn up brown paper bag and this is what we've begun now if your box has print on it make sure you're doing that on the print side because we don't want the print on the other other side because you have to cover that up too but this is what it looks like when it's wet and then it dries like this so our next step is when I did it before I used the stain over it you can use the old English but I think I'm going to try this grunge this thing keeps sealing on me it's a spaghetti sauce jar and it keeps sealing on me and my sponge the handle broke off and I don't know what I did with the new ones I bought so what you're going to do is just go over the paper and what we're doing now, this isn't going to work it's not dark enough let me get the old English I wondered about that okay this is old English scratch cover you can use a stain if you want but what we're doing is we're working whatever you're using for stain into all of the creases of the torn bag yes this is going to work can you see how the, now you see all the creases and we're just going to stain this And you're just rubbing it in you don't want to wipe too much of it back off because you want all of this in those grooves where all those pieces come together this isn't hard it's just a lot of steps
and I have the glue gun plugged in because I don't think the white glue is going to stick to the oil in the scratch cover. Do you see how it's getting into all those grooves of the torn pieces? That's what you want. And this is going to be our frame. I looked several different places. I wanted a religious um, bag, but I could not find one anywhere. Dollar Tree used to carry them. They could be out of them right now too, because everywhere Christmas stuff is almost gone. And it's just December 1st, crazy. And I swear the one store that we went in was putting Valentine stuff out. I was like, already? Okay. I always keep the rag that I use in a Ziploc because this is, whatever it touches, the stain. But it will wash off your hands. Okay. This is what we got. Can you see how that stain got in all of those grooves of the torn paper? That's why you want it torn and wrinkled. Because when this dries, this is going to look like leather. Okay, I'm going to set this aside and let this dry while we work on the next piece of cardboard. This is our second piece. Now we need to cover this also. This needs trimmed a little bit more. So what I thought, because our gift bag has so much red in it. So I have this red striped gift wrap. So I'm going to wrap this piece of cardboard in this. I need a bigger work surface. I don't care how big of a surface I have, it's never big enough. Okay. So we're just going to wrap it right over the edge a little bit. Let me get a piece of cut. I'm not sure this is even straight, but that's okay. <laughs> wrap these edges just like a present. We're going to wrap it over, crease it. I'm gluing this, but I also want glue on here because I don't want any space or anything letting loose when we glue this onto that. So I'm gluing this on.
lay this down. And rub it in. So if you don't glue your paper to your cardboard, then you have an air space between the cardboard and the paper. And you, when we mount the gift bag to this, you will have movement and it could rip loose from your whole thing and you don't want to go through all of this and then have it rip. So I'm just folding the corners up and folding it over. Let me cut this edge. Now you can use, you can paint this if you wanted. Um, depending on your gift bag, you could go really fancy with this. But mine is just a snowman and Rudolph. And I got that gift bag from Dollar General. And I'm pulling this paper really tight on this glue. So, Hobby Lobby has Santa pictures right now that are very popular, but they are so pricey. And I thought that I would just show you how to make one. Now, the religious pictures are gorgeous right now. Now, those... You could leave out year round, but you don't want a Santa picture out year round. So for that price, even with the percent off, to me, is a little too much. So I'm just wrapping it around. Now you don't have to do the entire board because you're not going to see but an inch of this paper. But instead of cutting all those strips and then trying to miter the corners and just better to just do it this way. Gift wrap it. I got a crease. Shoot. I'm going to have to work that out later. But there we go. Okay? So then we're going to take our gift bag and we're going to cut it apart. Take off the hanger. Now you want a double sided gift bag. I don't know if it's new this year, but some of the gift bags I looked at where the design was only on one side. I don't know if that's new this year. The manufacturer's trying to save money. I don't know. But you want a double-sided one because we're going to use the other side also. So we're just going to cut this apart. Take your time while you're doing this and get it nice and straight. And I'm just going right inside the seam and cutting it. Now I think I paid $2 for this size of a bag.
And I'm going right over these pre-folded seams that they have and just cutting this apart. Now where they have the, the shelf hanger out leaves a really sticky part. If that, we could get that off and I tried, I couldn't get it off. It would be nice to have this plaid, but we can't use that with that sticky on there. Now we do have two holes where the handle was and we're going to cover those up. But this is what we've got. And we're going to lay this down and get the same amount of space on all four sides. I thought I had a tape measure here, but so where I'm just going to eyeball it. Okay, now I'm going to hold my hand in the middle, making sure that it's straight. And I'm going to fold this back, and we're going to glue half of it at a time. I'm going to put a strip of glue right down, the, right down the middle where we folded it back. And then we're just going to And don't skip on, skimp on the glue here because you really want this adhered. Now if you have to, you can go back and get your corners. Now I'm going to pull this back and I'm going to do the same thing. We'll put a bunch of glue here. I think I'm going to glue the bag so I can get all four corners. Because the problem with pulling it back, you could crease it and you can't get those creases out. And I'm going from the center out. That way the bag won't bend. There you go. Okay. Oops, there's a little spot there that needs glue. You really want this bag adhered at this point. cute bag. So now we're going to take our first piece of cardboard and we're going to fold it over and we're going to glue all these pieces that are hanging over. We're going to glue it on. And I'm just using hot glue because if you use uh, the Elmer's glue, you're going to have to let this dry. So you can use the Elmer's glue on this part, but you're just going to have to leave it upside down to dry. Now it's best to fold your pieces over and then glue so you can get a flat edge. Now when you're tearing up your uh, paper for this, the bag has straight edges. You don't want those straight edges. You can use your straight edges to overlap your cardboard and put them on the back, but you don't want your straight edges on the front. It won't look right. Now these corners on this, I'm going to miter. I'm just going to fold over the edges like a present fold it over and then wrap it.
And this is a lot of gluing. <laughs> Now, I don't believe the white glue would hold this with using the um, Old English because it's an oil. It's made from walnut shells. And I don't think that the white glue would hold that oil. Now remember, whatever this old English until it dries, touches, is stained. And this paper gets really stiff because of the um, the glue. So you really have to press it to get it to bend. Now, when we are done, we could put another piece of brown paper over the back of this just to cover up all these edges, which is probably something I will do. Now you can hang this, you could take twine and make a hanger, or this size you could lean, like if you had a fireplace. We're still having an issue with squirrels. They kept us up most of the night last night, running around. <laughs> Exterminator was here today. He was supposed to come the other day at three, so I rescheduled our video. He was had uh, was overbooked, so he rescheduled for yesterday. Then he called off, so he came this morning at 8:30. It's like, oh mercy. So, what we couldn't see from the ground, he found several access points because the back of the house is an, an addition. So, they found a couple access points. So, it's going to be three weeks trying to get rid of these things because they got to put traps up there to trap them. So this ain't going to be a very slow process of getting those things out of the house, but it's kind of unnerving hearing them run around over your head. And somehow they got into the fireplace, the, um, the bed cover come off, or they took it off or something. So now they're down into the, in the fireplace chimney. Good thing it's not uh, usable they would be toast because we've had our portable fireplace on a couple of times already. So, I told my nephew to come get, when he was little, he had, they had squirrels outside their house and he called them ollie ollies and I told him to come get his ollie ollies. I'm tired of them. They're cute watching them run around outside, but I don't want them in my house. So, they're being evicted. Okay, did I 
look at it? Nope, I missed a part over here. Okay, got it all folded over. And I think I will put another piece of paper just to seal all that in. <clears throat> so there you go. Can you see all those? Yeah, you can tell. All that stain got into all those torn pieces. So we're going to take our picture and we're going to glue it to the big piece of cardboard. Making sure I got the same amount all the way around showing. Okay. So I'm just going to lift this up and put some glue because this hot glue on the paper will adhere right away. So what we could have done, and which I should have done, was laid that down and drew around it so I would know exactly where it is, but it's too late now. I've already started putting glue down. Okay, make sure I got the same. And then we're going to press this down. That's what we've got so far. So cute. So we're going to take some pieces, you can buy foam tabs, little foam tabs that will, in a scrapbook department, that will raise a picture above a picture to make it 3D. I could not find them. So the picture on the other side, I've cut out Santa already, okay? So now for Rudolph. I'm going to cut out his antlers and his nose and bow tie. Just going to cut them, go right around them and cut them out. So the picture is going to be 3D. And I'm going to use, this is foam board that I'm going to cut into little squares because I could not find those foam tabs. Now Dollar Tree does carry them. Uh, you can get them in scrapbook department at um, Hobby Lobby, uh, Michael's, anywhere that carries scrapbook supplies. And I think I'm going to cut out his pom-pom on his hat too. Let me get his pom pom. Now, when you're cutting paper, instead of moving the scissors around your design, it's better to move the paper. You get a smoother cut. See, I'm just with my left hand, I'm just moving my bag.
See, I'm moving the paper as I'm cutting, not the scissors. You get a smoother cut. So whatever design you're using, whatever designs on your bag, you can pick just certain elements and cut them out. Use one solid design like the Santa face and then the Rudolph, we're gonna put pieces of him on there. So he has a no big nose, we're gonna use that. And then I'm gonna cut out his, um, there's a bow on the package that he's holding. I'm gonna cut that out. See what else can we cut out of him? We can cut the fur on his hat. is just going around and just cutting this out. Aw, Tommy just walked in with a bouquet of sunflowers. Aw, thank you. That's sweet. I was looking at sunflowers at a at the grocery store the other day. Thank you, I appreciate that. Okay, so we have his the fur on his hat. So we're gonna take this foam board. If you can find the little squares, you're better. Well, it's just simpler and easier. But I'm just gonna cut little tiny pieces of this foam board into squares. This is not something that's going to be seen, but it's going to make our picture 3D. So I'm just cutting little squares. Now some of these um, I'm going to make higher than the other. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, that might be enough. So we have all Rudolph stuff here. And we need some for Santa. So we're gonna raise, we're gonna put the pictures we cut out directly over top of what's already printed on the bag, but it's gonna be raised up. So it's gonna give it a 3D effect.
and I'm not quite sure why the two places I looked did not have these foam squares because it's a regular scrapbook thing. Okay, we're going to flip, whoops, we've got to cut this tag off. We're going to flip Santa over. Let's round off this corner. We don't want a straight corner. Okay, I'm going to take some of these foam squares and we're going to glue them together, two together. And we're going to put one right at the top of Santa's head. Now we're working on the back side of the part we cut out. So we're going to put two of them together. So Santa's is going to be a little higher off of our picture than Rudolph. So we're going to put several of them all over the back of this cutout. And I'm going in just about a finger's width from the edge of the picture. And all it takes is a little dot of glue. But by the time that we are worked ourself, our way all the way around Santa, this glue will have set up. quite a few of these around. The only other way that you could do this with just a couple of these uh, risers is to mount the cutouts on poster board or you could do this. Now you need to put at least one in the middle of the picture to hold the center. Okay, one more right there. That's what I've done so far. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to put glue on each one of these little risers and then we're going to put him on top of the picture on the bag. Okay, so we're going to flip this and we're going to match up this design and then we're just going to sit it down and tap back and forth putting that down. See how that rises it up? Can you see that? It takes it right off the picture and it gives it a really nice 3D effect. So now let's do Rudolph's parts. Got to get some more foam here. I had a whole bunch of it sitting here. Sometimes you can't see stuff and you're looking straight at it. Let's see if that's enough. So we're only going to put one piece of the riser on these, on Rudolph parts, because Santa's going to 
be off the picture more than Rudolph is. So this is his, the tie on his package. Some of my phone pieces went under Santa there. Okay. So then we're going to glue this down. Right over top of the package tie there. Now what we're going to do his nose. So I think for this we just need two risers because his um, nose isn't that big. Okay, his nose. We got two on there. Now he's got antlers and we have the pom-pom on his hat. So we'll put one right in the center of the pom-pom. Right in the center. Make sure it's going the right way. Let's do his antlers. Now these, if you're using foam board like I am, I just had happened to have pieces. Um, you can cut your pieces to match your design. Okay, the sizes of the little squares. working it with hot glue in these little pieces it's really easy to burn your finger. Hi Marsha. Hi Di. So let's put this antler on. So we've used a bunch of different techniques. The uh, brown paper bag is an old one. Cut these down to do the fur on his hat. So these are really tiny. I'm going to glue these directly onto the hat because I don't want finger burn. Yeah, that's easier. So I'm, I think I'm just going to put four right down the center, the length of the hat. Try and get rid of glue strings. Just see, I put them right down the center of the hat. And I'm barely putting a dot of glue on there. So what this does is just, it's a 3D effect. It just gives your picture another dimension. So let's see if you can see it. Let me lift it up. You can see underneath, and Santa's higher than the Rudolph pieces. 
if if you're out shopping and you see a religious gift bag tag me where you are so I can go try and find one okay so now we're going to put a bow on this where I'm not sure yet I have several different ribbons some of them are wired some of them aren't I also made these curly cues out of this wide ribbon this checked and I wrap this around a piece of PVC pipe so I don't know if we'll use one of these but I'm thinking we need a ribbon up here on the top and then we're going to make a hanger on the back with some jute so let's see I have reds and greens because that's mainly what's in the picture so we could give Santa right where the um, the hole for the handle of the bag was we could take a little tiny piece of this red and white twine I got this from Dollar General we can make a tiny little bow and put right over top of that hole you really can't see it and if you really have to look for that but I know it's there so oh thanks Di thanks Marcia so all it is is cardboard a brown paper bag and a gift bag so I'm going to take this and put it right over top of where that hole is right on his hat so then we'll take all these ribbons and I'm just going to cut some pieces off and we've done this refab bow before um, I know some people have problems making a traditional bow so this one is um, easy to do and I'm going to take maybe three pieces of each ribbon now this this ribbon I don't know if you can see this on um, it's a barricaded green it's light it's dark I picked this up at Hobby Lobby on the spool it just looks green it's a sheer ribbon but when you open it it's different it's variegated it's different colors of green it's very pretty it doesn't say that on the packaging but can you see it it goes from light to dark and back to light again it's very pretty get some more of this one now this ribbon this is just a satin like a brocade ribbon I got this from a flea market so I pick up ribbon and trims everywhere I go because especially at flea markets and that you can um, get some really nice ones now this one is a wired ribbon it has a silver trim but it's wired so we're going to make this one longer because we can make curly cues because it's wired and I'm only going to put one piece of this and I have a green one like this too so this is the red oh thanks mom just once you start ideas come to your head or like last night I was looking at the snowman and it was made out of pumpkins which I can't get pumpkins right now so I came up with a way I could make that snowman without the pumpkins and I think I posted a video of Tony's reaction to that he's rolled his eyes like oh god here we go again so I'm going to put in some of this red and white twine I'm just going to put a piece of it and then this curly cue I'm going to put that in also 
I'm going to open it up and then it will curl on the ends on its own. I'm going to scrunch this all together and I'm going to trim this down too. Take a piece of this twine and tie it around the center. I'm going to fold it in half and I am going to tie this extremely tight. I'm going to scrunch it together and tie it really, really tight. And then we're going to trim it. Now, when I trim all these pieces off of my ribbons, I save those pieces. Because if you need a tiny little bow, you can make a refab, a tiny little refab bow with all those pieces. So you don't want to throw stuff away that you're going to need at another time. So now these wired ribbons, I have a dowel rod here. I'm just going to take and I'm going to wrap it around the dowel rod just to make it curl it up there. I'm just going to twist it around. See, it makes those little curly cues. Now you can, with this wire ribbon, you can um, make this as loose or as tight as you want. Take one up, one down. Now this, this um, ribbon that we made with the glue is also twisting here. So let's pull these. Let's trim them off some. So there we go. Let's trim these ties too. There we go. So if your bag has gold in it, you can add gold to this bow, which would be very pretty. But I just pulled out all the colors that was in this bag. The only color I didn't have was the gold that's on their packages. Santa's package has a gold bow. I didn't have that. And I'm just going to glue this in the upper left corner. Right above Rudolph's right, um, antlers. So there we go, out of a gift bag, some cardboard, a brown paper bag. Now can you see how that is now, it's starting to dry, it looks like leather, and that's just a brown paper bag. And two pieces of cardboard. <laughs> Thanks Tony, <laughs> he's watching from the living room. <laughs> And can you see how it's 3D? You can't really tell that on camera. There you go. You can tell. Santa is higher than Rudolph. His nose and bow and antlers. Thanks, Di. So I hope you liked watching this. It brought back an old technique with the brown paper bag, making it look like leather. Now you can go to a thrift store and find a frame that will fit your gift bag and do this. But I just wanted to do a couple different techniques that I haven't done in a while. Now this brown paper bag, like I said earlier, 
I did a floor like this. Of course, it took a whole lot of brown paper bags, but then you got them. Then you got them in a grocery store when you went grocery shopping. But I did that, and I had more compliments on that floor. Everybody went in the back room of the store. But it's a shame it was in the back room of the store because most people didn't see it. But you got to put a lot of polyurethane over it. But there you go. I hope you like it. Thank you for joining me. We're back again tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.